Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. So, got a little project here today. Working on clearing some out the camshaft here. What are you doing, Bailey? Got a camshaft here that needs clearance for a stroker engine so the rods don't slam into it when they come around. So that means every 120 degrees uh, stagger down this uh, camshaft, I've got to cut the notches on both sides because this turns half engine speed. So uh, it's got to clear one way, then 180 got to clear again. So my plan is to be able to do the into because they're in phase, loosen the clamps, clock at 120, do the next two because they're in phase here and down at the other end, and then loosen the clamps, turn it again, and I'll do the centers. I'll probably have to move these blocks in when I do the centers because there may be too much vibration. Uh, the cutter may not like it, but otherwise. I think it should go pretty good. Uh, there's nothing critical about this. We're just looking for clearance. So uh, probably say take 60 thou down and then go across. And we'll see what that looks like on each side. So I'm gonna hook the DRO up where I can use that. And I'll fire up the phase converter and fire up the mill and we'll get to cutting.
Well, that's a wrap on this job. I managed to get all of the reliefs cut in here for the connecting rods to be able to clear because this thing turns around and looks pretty decent. I'm satisfied with it. Notice the setup's changed here. Perhaps I, I think I had this in the video somewhere, but I uh, should have known better than initially where I had this to the side. It didn't put enough clamp force on it and I wanted to try to spit the camshaft out the end with the cutter engaged in the side of it. So I had to move this around where I could get the bolts and use them to block in each end of the camshaft so it wasn't able to walk in either direction. And that's managed to make everything stable enough. I was able to do the rest of the cuts without any issues. And in the center you notice that uh, I plunged them with the end mill rather than uh, milling them sideways because the cutter force was too much. Without this being supported in the middle, it would just vibrate and ring. I uh, probably could have put some jacks underneath of it and steadied it out, but it was just as easy just to go ahead and just uh, plunge cut it and help to use a few more bits of the uh, end mill that were not otherwise getting used on this particular one, so even out the wear a little bit. And it worked good, just going in there and plunging it off. And I would do the pairs together at the same level of safe moving the machine backwards and forwards all the time. So, hope you enjoyed getting to see a little job on the big boring mill, but it worked out good for this longer length. I uh, was able to do this all in one setup, and it's about 48 inches overall length, so. Went pretty good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later.